Round three of the World Rally Raid Championship brought the teams, drivers and riders to the west coast of Portugal. A new event on the calendar, the BP Ultimate Rally Raid, and it posed a whole host of different challenges so far unseen in this year's W2RC series. Yes, we've moved away from sand and onto more traditional tricky trails. And with all the usual suspects in attendance, the fights across all five categories raged over five days of intense competition. And this is how things looked. The bivouac based in Grandola and the first two loop stages of over 100 kilometers. But it was day three where things got really tough. Nearly 400 kilometers and a trip into Spain for an overnight bivouac in Badajoz before heading back to Portugal for two more loop stages. To the bikes then, and in the Rally GP category, Honda's Tosha Shariner instantly took the lead of the event in the prologue. A great ride and the conditions clearly suited the Hondas. His teammate Adrian Van Beveren was just two seconds further back, but rolling straight into stage one, Van Beveren picked up 12 minutes of time penalties, while Shariner built himself up a lead of over four minutes. In the beginning it was really, really hard with the, with the sandy terrain. I tried to push again hard, but uh, I had a little mistake with, with, my, <coughs> with my riding in the sand. Sebastian Buhler, meanwhile, born in Germany but a son of Portugal, entered the party on stage two, winning the loop and moving up into second place overall. It has a lot of water before the, the refueling, so I tried to go fast but at the same time to take care of the bike because very fast it can go wrong. With Shariner and Bueller out front, current championship leader Ross Branch wasn't able to match the pace of the leaders. And after a weekend of riding smart and to his own pace, he eventually finished fifth. Meanwhile, Adrian Van Beveren was on the move after his earlier penalties and with a brace of stage victories, he recovered to finish fourth of the W2RC runners and was enjoying the rally, even after smoking the rear tire on stage four. The last part, everybody was with the slick tire, and we managed our best. But sometimes it was uh, it was scary, you know, when you have to brake and you don't have uh, grip on the rear, you you slide really fast. But uh, yeah, I enjoy. I like this kind of terrain. I enjoy this riding. Skyler Howes put in perhaps the most consistent ride of everyone. The Californian stayed out of trouble to pick up points for third. But up at the front, Bueller could do nothing about the pace of Tosha Shariner. The Spaniard going on to take a start to finish victory and maximum points here in Portugal. My first ever uh, World Championship win, so yeah, always special, always emotional and more here in Portugal. So close to my home and yeah, super emotional. So this is how things stack up. Ross Branch continues to lead 21 points clear of Adrian Van Beveren with Ricky Brabeck slipping to third. And in the Manufacturers' Championship, it's anyone's guess. Hero lead Honda by three points. In Rally 2, Bradley Cox put in a spectacular effort to lead home the W2RC runners. Another man who had to fight back after picking up penalties on day one. He behaved himself for the rest of the event and beat Roman Dumontia by over five minutes. Oh, we put in a good week um, and looks still getting the same to do throughout the whole year. Big thanks to the team and uh, everyone that helps me get here and uh, yeah, looking forward to the rest of the year now. And just look at that, a real fight on our hands. Just three points separate Dumontier, Jean-Louis Lepin and Bradley Cox. Meanwhile, Rally 3 kicked off in Portugal and it was a proper family affair after the Amaral brothers were going at it. But it was Gonzalo who beat his sibling Salvador to the top spot. I'm very happy to, to be in the first place. It's my first time in navigation and everything went well and 
it's an amazing race and I'm very happy to be here. And so, by default, Gonzalo leads Salvador by five points with Pedro Bianchi Prata in third. In the quads, Manuel Andujar sent a clear message to his rivals, winning the prologue and the first three stages. After day three, he was over 20 minutes clear of Gaetan Martinez. A lot of kilometers and also a lot of mud and a lot of water and my ERTF system, the GPS is broken again, so hard day for me. But everything would unravel on day four. Rear axle failure followed by a fall and Andrea found himself 40 minutes down and out of the fight for the win. Instead, it was that familiar name, Kamil Wisniewski, who picked up the mantle and the Polish rider, with just one full day remaining, was able to fend off Antanas Kanopkinas to take the win. In the championship, Andiar continues to lead, but Kanopkinas has closed up the gap, with Hani Alnumesi just three points further back. Over to the ultimate category now, and championship leader and Dakar winner Carlos Sainz was back in town, this time in a mini. Meanwhile, winner of the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge last time out was Nasser Alatia, and he was desperate for the win. We are a professional driver and we know what we do and uh, uh, we can race in each condition, you know, it's no problem, but okay, uh, we need to be clever and uh, to win this race. And it was a good start for NASA, winning the prologue stage, but that was not something he'd be able to repeat on stage one. Instead, the early lead was held by Gerland Shishery, but a technical failure on day two ended any hopes of fighting for the win. Meanwhile, Alatia smashed in a hot one to take the lead after the second day. His closest rival came in the form of Joao Ferreira in the Mini, the local star drawing on all of his home experience to keep the pressure on Alatia in difficult conditions. Emotions through, through this week, the, the tension was really, really high. A lot of pressure from our side because we are the locals, let's say like this. But I think we managed quite well and I'm very happy. This is also my first race with a new partnership with Repsol. So I think uh, we started the right foot. Carlos Sainz, meanwhile, was sitting comfortably in third. But enter the final day and the Spaniard was getting pressure from Lucas Moraes in the Toyota. It was going to be a sprint to the finish, and it was Marais who spoiled the Spanish party to take third overall. But up at the front and leading from stage two onwards, Nasser Alatia in the Pro Drive Run Hunter. He made it another win on Portuguese turf after competing here for the last few years in the Baja. More importantly than any of that, he now leads the Drivers' Championship. We are so happy you know, to win this race and uh, it was very difficult, but okay, uh, to win and to, to have a good lead now uh, in the championship and yeah, this is, will be amazing for us. There is confirmation of Alatir's lead, but by just two points from Carlos Sainz with Yazid Al-Raji rounding out the top three. And in the manufacturer's standings, Toyota Gazoo Racing lead by 23 points from NASA Racing by ProDrive with X-Raid Mini JCW team in third. It was action from start to finish in the Challenger class. Plenty of thrills and spills throughout the week. And for championship leader Rokas Bachuska, he took the early lead of the category after the short 100km stage one. A completely different type of terrain here in Portugal to the sand events of the first two rounds of the championship, and it suited Argentina's Nicolas Cavigliasso, a former Dakar winner in the quad category, and he was keeping Bachuska honest. He snatched the lead on stage two. 
But it was on the run from Grandola to Badajoz in Spain where Bachuska opened up the taps and that's where he made all the difference. The longest stage of the rally and nearly 12 minutes quicker than Cavigliasso, his lead now stood at a healthy eight minutes. Further back, a good effort from local driver Ricardo Porem saw him take a well-deserved third position and with Cavigliasso in second, Bachuska cruised to his first W2RC victory of 2024. It was uh, different what we you know, used to drive, but yeah, we are happy, we are uh, going forward uh, to the championship, we are still, still leading the championship. And there is confirmation of that, Bachuska with a healthy 34-point lead over America's Austin Jones, Nicholas Cavigliasso just five points further back. And that just left the SSV class and championship leader Yasser Saidan came into the event as clear favourite. But Spain's Ricardo Ramillo had other ideas. His first W2RC victory came on stage one and he took the early lead. Yesterday was a happy day, a special day, my first time to win uh, one stage in the, in the World Championship. Very happy, very happy. And he wasn't done yet. Although Saidan fought back with a win on stage two, he was eventually forced to retire, which left Ramillo clear to win every single remaining stage and go on to take victory overall here in Portugal. Thank you for everybody. I am, I, I am very happy with the situation. The win in the World Championship is not my dreams. It's a surprise for me, but I am happy for this. Despite a difficult weekend for the Saudi Arabian, Yassir Saidan continues to lead the category 37 points clear. The riders and drivers loved it, the fans loved it. The tricky technical trails of the BP Ultimate Rally Raid delivered on every front. Next up, the championship heads for Argentina in June for the Desafia Ruta and we'll be there to bring you every second of action. Until then, it's goodbye.